and welcome to another edition of Dark Snow Sports. This week, it's my preview week two of the CFL course last week. Coming off a huge week, where I won an impressive, an incredible 4-0 all my picks. So let's keep it rolling this week. And first week of the CFL, very, very entertaining. You know, only one team uh, didn't score 30 points. A lot of high-scoring games, a lot of great action in the CFL. Hopefully, there's just as much entertainment and great action in week two of the CFL, which I think there will be because we have some very, very good, juicy matchups for week two in the CFL. But let's get started with a rematch from week one as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers travel to Montreal to take on the Montreal Alouettes on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers first. Impressed in the first game, I'll say that about the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Not expecting a lot uh, week one against the Alouettes, but very, very impressive um, for the Bombers. You know, Buck Pierce played great. Uh, great, great return game last week. Defense, again, playing good. But the Bombers, the big question is, can Buck Pierce stay healthy? That's going to be the question all year round. Because it's pretty clear. Last week, the Montreal Alouettes targeted Buck Pierce. You know, targeted him. And let's be honest. If they hurt Buck Pierce, the Alouettes know. We all know. If he goes out of the game, there is no one coming in at the same level as a Buck Pierce. You know, last year at Alex Spring. But now, he, he he's now gone. He's in Toronto. Or even a uh, Elliot, who is also who is in uh, BC, and it's pretty clear for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers to be successful this year. Buck Pierce might has to stay healthy, and if he doesn't stay healthy, the team doesn't have a chance. But that being said, this team played really well in the second half after getting behind four, fourteen nothing early. I thought they would just pa pack it in and just wait for the next game, but no. As a uh, a different team, it seems like this year the Winnipeg Bombers. Last year they would have packed it in and called it a day, but not but not this team this year. As they came to play in the second half, almost coming back a strong second half, almost coming back all the way to win. But Montreal did what Montreal does, which is win the game. And tough loss for Winnipeg uh, last week, but doesn't get any any easier this week as they're playing those same Montreal Wets this time on the road and the Montreal Wets. I mean, I got to tell you something, man. I'm a big, big fan of their new coach. Dan Hawkins, man. The complete opposite of uh, Mark Tressman. I mean, what a what a character. I mean, this guy really is a cowboy. I mean, has a ranch in Montana. What a great thing for the CFL to have a character like this guy. I mean, great coach. And a coach I can really get behind. I think a lot of these players are starting to get behind. I know it's early. But Dan Hawkins is like that college atmosphere kind of coach. That raw, raw guy gets guys going. And I really like this coach. I mean, he's cooked in a short time. I think he's got a believer in a lot of player, a lot of veteran players on that team. And when you got a quarterback like AC, what more has to be said? AC at his age, still getting it done. And I think that'll be a difference this week. You know, Montreal against Winnipeg, rematch from last week. Uh, Montreal proved in the fourth quarter that they are still, they know how to get it done when their back is against the wall. And this team knows when the lights are on bright, they know when to get it done. I think the same thing about this week. I think AC will have another great game. I think Winnipeg will keep this close. I don't think this will be blow. I think the Blue Bombers will be a very competitive team this year. But the Montreal, let's get this done by one touchdown. And our next matchup, the Toronto Argonauts travel to BC Place to take on the BC Lions. Should be a good one. Actually, this one was, as I predicted start of the year, this could be a great cup preview. As I, as I predicted the start of the year, this could be a great cup preview. But a long ways to way to go for, for that. But let's focus on this week. And the Toronto Argonauts, last week against the Ticats, at times looked pathetic. At times looked ugly, but at the end of the day, they got the job done. And it just shows that when a champion is against the wall, they know how to fight. They know when to make the big plays, and that's exactly what the Argonauts did last week 
when they had to make a big play, they made the big play. When they had to make a key stop, they made the key stop. Champions know how to readjust on the fly, and that's exactly what happened last week against the Tire Cats. Ricky Ray played great the whole game, finding Matt. It seems like Barnes is going to be his number one target this year. Uh, Chad Owens had another great game, but going back to Matt Barnes, you know, we targeted him a lot this last game against the Tiger Cats, and, I sp and there seems to be some, some uh, sick, sick, sick chemistry going on right now with uh, him and Matt Barnes, S second year playing together, and they clearly know how to get it done together, you know, going back to their days and with uh, the uh, Eskimos, and I think Matt Barnes got one hell of a year. And I think R R Ricky Ray uh, will only kill you better. But let's focus more on this defense. At times, Henry Burris could do anything he wants to this defense. But in that second half, give it up to Chris Jones, defense corner for Toronto Argonauts. He readjusted on the fly in that game. And he made the proper adjustments to get it done. And I think the Toronto Argonauts, this is a good sign for, for, for the Argos this year. So I believe they will continue to sl continue to continue with their role, and I just believe the Toronto Argonauts are just on a hot streak right now, and they might be in that mode. Maybe nobody can beat them at all in the CFL, and they're taking on BC. Let's be honest, last week's uh, against Calgary, very, very, very disappointing. I mean, all this great, all this great Grey Cup talk, which is great, but it seems the BC Lions have a Far distance to go if they expect to get to the Grey Cup. I mean, Lule looked out of sync with his with his new receivers. You know, their defense didn't play well. Drew Tate just tore them up. And it seems to be a lot of guys on the team that like to do a lot of this, need to do a little more of this, and start playing. I mean, the BC Lions, are they talented? Of course they're talented. Probably one of the more talented, more talented teams in the league. But the BC Lions need to shut their yap and start to play games. I mean, this team is front to back, maybe the most talented team in the West, maybe in, the all, maybe in all the CFL. But for them to play the way it did last week and, and for me to say they are great cup contenders, I don't think so. Will BC play a better game this week? I think they will, but I just think the Toronto Argonauts are just in that nobody can beat, beat them zone right now. And... I think Toronto are going to just get the job done. Tight game. Tight game. But I believe the Argonauts get this done by a field goal. Tight game, but the Argonauts get the job done. Our next game, the Calgary Stampeders travel to Saskatchewan to take on the Red Hut Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Woo! Boy, did they leave a whooping on the Eskimos last week. But first on Calgary, very, very important game last week for the uh, Stamps. As um, <clears throat> they had a big chip on their shoulder. Let's call it as all off season. You know, the talk of them against the Lions uh, last in the, in the West Final last year was the Lions did a lot, did a, did a lot, did a lot of talking how the Stamps being them was just a fluke, and they wanted to prove it. And man, did they ever prove it! This team played great last week, and Drew Tate, new, new, ha new haircut and all. Played amazing. Drew Tate right now looks to maybe be the best best quarterback in the CFL. And just this team's just rolling. Cornish has run the ball like he was last year. I mean, this guy might be unstoppable. Their defense played great. And the Calgary Stampeders look unstoppable right now in the West. And they're taking our team in Saskatchewan, who, with with uh, without Simon last week, I, ha I had my doubts. I had my worries. But Getzlap stepped up last week. And if he continues to play this way, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are going to have one hell of a year. Because with uh, if Getzlap and Sue Simon comes back in, this team could be very, very scary. But no Simon again this week. And I just think a red-hot Drew Tate will just be too much for Saskatchewan. They played great last week against the Empton Eskimos. But this will be a real test against uh, last year's Grey Cup uh, runner-up. And I just believe Calgary Stampeders, with still that chip on the shore, still proving that last year was no fluke. And I believe the Calgary Stampeders 
Uh, get this one. Tight game, but I think the Calgary St. Peters win by a touchdown. In our last matchup of the week, as the Edmonton Eskimos travel to Guelph to take on the Hamilton Tiger Cats of Guelph. Of course, it should be interesting. Uh, Tiger Cats playing in their... Uh, uh, in Guelph this week for the first time, and I think they'll want to put on a show. And they're playing a team in the Edmonton Eskimos, let's be honest. If there was one team that sucked last week, it was the Edmonton Eskimos. Boy, did they look out of sync, terrible, horrible, whatever word you want to use. They, 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 they were that. I mean, Rowley played Awful. Mike Rowe, their new QB, looked awful, out of sync with no, no chemistry whatsoever with any of these receivers. Defense looked awful. Now, to be honest, they did have a lot of turnover in that team, and boy, did it show. A new offensive line, basically, you know, there was one receiver returning, and he's at a, di- diff- at a di- different spot. The defense, what can you say? Big holes all day. Scotch one. Ke- uh, could have done anything he wanted from start to finish. Just an awful, awful showing from start to finish this game. And the Edmonton Eskimos, man, if they don't clean up. The- I know it's a long season. I know the CFL is 18 games. But if they don't clean this up quick, man, this season can get away from you fast. And the Edmonton Eskimos clearly look like the worst team in the CFL right now bar none and they're taking on a team in the Hamilton Tiger Cats who I said last week they had to prove they had to prove it to me and boy did they ever prove it to me did they lose yes but if Gable doesn't drop that ball in the fourth quarter uh, with time expiring probably different story Fantus uh, probably r- r- routine catch for him, but if he catches that pass, definitely a catch for the uh, Cats and a win. But man, Henry Burris, I'm not Henry Burris' b- biggest fan by any means, but man, he played great last week. Uh, but still clear, what was this? What was the key about the Tire Cats last year? They scored a lot of points. The other, they went away in the second half, and when it came down to it, the defense gave up. Gave up too many key plays, and that's exactly what happened last week. Scoring 31 points in the first half, then three points in the second half. You know, the defense giving up big holes. There was one, there was a few uh, breakdowns last week, um, especially Barnes just left wide open. I don't know, Matt Barnes catching all those balls, usually wide open. I don't see how that happens. Their defense must improve for this team. To get better this year, this team must, must improve. But I think this week will be no contest for, for the Thai Cats. I think in front of that new fan base in Guelph, I think they won't put on a show. I think they will. I think Burris will light it up. And I think the Edmonton Eskimos will continue to struggle. And the Thai Cats leave a whooping on the Eskimos this week. And I think they win this game by three touchdowns. So to recap, I like the Alouettes. I like the Argos. I like the Stamps. And I like the Hamilton Tire Cats of Guelph to get the job done this week. But till next time, I'm Eric Dutcher saying I'm Ducks, and I know sports. Kind of. <laughs>